Well, obviously, it's just so difficult to, to win in the Pac-12. Um, uh, it was just such a great game. It was such – so, you know, both teams played so hard. Really impressed with, with Oregon State and, you know, not having many games under the belt that they could be that sharp and, and that physical and that strong and um, – really a hard matchup, I think, for anyone, but certainly us. Um, they had just some phenomenal performances. Obviously, Goodman is, was just a, a star. Um, so being able to do that, you know, I mean, lost three games in a row and, and not knowing how your team is as far as confidence-wise to come in here and, and take just an unbelievable shot from Oregon State, especially go down early like we did in the, in the first quarter and then just – this team just continues to impress me with how they respond to adversity and how they how resilient they are and how we fought back and 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 just battled all the way to the end. Talk about the talk about that double overtime there. It kind of became a free throw contest a little bit there towards the end. Cheryl and Melina really came up big. I believe she hit five of six around the double OT period. Just what's that say about your team that you guys are able to stay poised and not get rattled, not get caught up in the moment, and that you're able to focus and stay calm, cool, and collective? Well, I think, you know, again. Still not shooting the ball great. Um, I haven't looked at the stat sheet to know exactly what we've done. But I, I just am so – to have that kind of energy from Cheryl and uh, Molina to come off the bench. I mean, uh, and everybody out there thinks she can't shoot, but she's worked so hard on it. And there's just something about someone that's so gritty and so tough and so, um, you know, just in for the big moment. She's not afraid of the moment. Not only did she make two threes that were just huge at a time when, when we were really struggling offensively, she makes the free throws. And I don't know what she ended up with. She had to end up with some great rebounds, two offensive rebounds, four for the game, but just big, big rebounds. She's, she, those Molinas jump like little jumping beans. So she gets in there and battles so hard. She defended so hard. So to have that coming off the bench and to have that kind of guard play um, clearly is, is something that we really need. Bench play, um, She's very well could be a starter. The only one I thought everyone I went to off the bench was really good um, and managed the game better. We've still got to keep playing people. I shortened that bench in that second half, but um, it was just such a hard fought game that I felt uh, really we had good momentum in the second half. What can you say about the uh, Ledger Walker's performance today? Crystal ends up with 23. Charlize has 22. It seemed like at moments and times out there, they were just one up in each other out in the court mm -hmm. offensively. Just talk about that offensive performance and just how tough is this team when you're getting that kind of production from your backcourt like that? You know, again, they're just, uh, they're, they're, a, they're, a, they're a problem for the other team. You have to account for them. Uh, they score at all different levels. Um, they're threats at all different levels. Um, but what you is so impressive offensively, obviously we need them to score, but they are just such complete guards. They, and yo, all of our team, I mean, you can't look at anyone on our team and go, they, well, she doesn't guard at all. Cause we all go on the floor and we, we guard like crazy. And the fact that crystal played full court, you know, in someone's shorts, the entire game played this many minutes, um, 49 minutes. It's just insane. Uh, but that kind of effort from those two and, and honestly, the, on, on all facets of the game is huge, but they want to win. They're competitive, great, great uh, teammates. And, um, you know, you want them on your team. You want them in your foxhole, man. They're, they're, they're kids that, that, that you can count on. What was the message to the team after the first quarter there defensively? You guys allowed 66%. Oregon State came out, hit their first five shots. But what really kind of seemed to turn around was your defensive effort. Your intensity picked up. You guys are starting to get your hands in the passing lane, taking the ball out of their hands a couple of times. What was your message to the team after that first quarter to, to really spark the defensive effort? I don't know who made the three. It might have been Charlize at the end of that quarter, but I thought that was a really big three that got us within six, you know, being down so much there. Um and we took their punch. I mean, we, that's all you do is you just – you understand that that sometimes teams come out really hot and high. We gave up three threes, I think, in that, and they were all kind of mistakes defensively. I think they finished a half with four. Uh, so we only give up one in the second quarter. So, again, you just build on the momentum and the good things that, that you've got going. And we, I thought our shot selection was really good in the first quarter. Um, and, you know, you just think that the game that, – that the the balls will start going your way and, and they need to. And, but again, when you can count on just such solid defense to get you back in games, it sure is a load off a little bit, a load off your shoulder. So um, this, we, I think we just dug in and kind of got to know them and knew what we needed to do to guard them. 
I'm going to open the floor up to questions. We're going to start with Brenna Green from CRIM. Go ahead, Brenna. Tammy, just uh, how's your heart feeling after these last five games? I don't want to tell my doctor, but I, a long time ago, I well, about a month ago, I I think I tore my hamstring off of my butt bone, like 60%, my doctor said. And, I, and so I'm not supposed to do anything for three months. So I jumped and did something and I might have not made a bigger issue back there. So uh, my heart's a lot better than my backside right now. But uh, I, I, having one, you, you just feel really good about uh, we can manage any of those difficulties. I'm, I'm just really thrilled for this team. How big is it to just get this win, especially going into, you know, back-to-back -back games against Stanford? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you just – you just can't look too far ahead. You can't, it's so, you know, you, you kind of know your scouts and you look at your schedule based on scouts and schedule and things like that. And if you, if you watch, if you look too closely, you just get really depressed and, and, and you wonder where are we going to get a win? I mean, where in the world are you going to get a win? And, and um, I, we obviously knew coming in here to Oregon state was one of the hardest places to play. And we knew that they would be so desperate for a win, knew it was going to be a really tough, situation obviously now we get the pleasure of going home that's awesome but you know we get two games with Stanford and um you know but you just you just celebrate the win celebrate the success celebrate the how how much we're growing and and I mean that not just you know in wins but just doing the right things on the court and playing the right way and being resilient and learning how to compete in those moments and we celebrate those whether we win or lose because um, that's building some some really, you know, something special, I think, in this program that we can continue to, to improve on those things. 